Welcome back to Geology 110. We're going to talk a little bit right now about our course policy statement. Now, these things have changed considerably over the last few years. Uh, what I want to tell you is, of course, with the uh, pandemic and this being offered as a blended course, which means really online for the lecture part, and then the lab is going to be in person and taught by a teaching assistant. Um, this is only covering the lecture part, but it does cover the overall grading as well. But it's going to be up to your teaching assistant as to how much uh, emphasis they put on their grading and so forth and where and when you meet and all that. So you need to, to find out who your teaching assistant is, and that's going to be on your registration. It, you know, you show up at the right time for the uh, for the labs, and that's going to be on the third floor of Temple Hall. So uh, for this part, for the lecture part, however, we're going to meet in the large lecture hall. I think there are 52 of you signed up for this course right now. Uh, we're going to meet there only once, twice, three times, four times over the course of the entire semester. Um, what I want to do is to also make myself available to you for questions at least once a week, uh, maybe on Fridays to answer questions, uh, to clarify anything that you may, any information that you may need to get down right in your notes for the, um, for the videos that I'm going to prepare for the course. So, and there are already some prepared. Um, but in the, um, the upshot is I want to go over the policy statements with you right now. So, uh, first of all, you can find me easily, most easily, by emailing me. In fact, there's a new email policy, which I didn't put in here, but you're supposed to have access to email so we can communicate with one another. The other place to get a hold of me, of course, is sending me an email through uh, Blackboard, and so that's, a, that's another way. And so much of the material, in fact, all of the material through here is either going to be through Blackboard or videos that I post up to uh, to YouTube. And so those videos, the university doesn't want uh, videos posted up to Blackboard, so I don't do that. But uh, just to give you a heads up here, that's where you're going to find most of the information that you need. That's going to be on Blackboard, on the Blackboard course, and it will be up this evening, actually. This is Sunday evening right now where I'm recording this. Um, so overall, the course policy... <laughs> Um, you have my information at the very top of this, and this is going to be listed under course information on Blackboard. Uh, I have a couple of offices that I hang out in, one more than the other. I'm usually in Temple 325 if I'm around at all, uh, and I haven't been around during the pandemic much at all. Uh, so I prepare these at home mostly, and uh, we can also meet by Zoom if you need to. Uh, that's another possibility, so uh, I'm not really... Uh, up on Zoom. I don't really like Zoom, frankly. Uh, when I go to um, have meetings and, and so forth, and, you know, Zoom is kind of a pain. But uh, but I do, you know, want to make sure that you have access to me and to information that you may need. And so email me first. And if I can't answer it through an email, we'll set up a time on uh, during the week when I can come in and talk with you in person, uh, you know, and, and usually it's going to be during course, uh, the class time here. So that'll be very handy. So at least we have some time set up already. And that is, a, that is of course, one, uh, excuse me, 10, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So you can look for me around there uh, at that time if I may be meeting with somebody else. I do plan on being there before the exams also, and so we are going to do reviews uh, in that classroom before the uh, the exams are going to be held the next class period, usually. So it's usually, I think they, well, I've got all of these listed in here already, but those are the important dates to keep track of. Also, uh, there's posted a uh, schedule for the course, and so I've tried to give you at least what the topics are as we go through the semester and what the special dates are where we won't meet at all. You know, for instance, with President's Day or with Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, those are dates that are holidays and are set in stone, and we can't do anything on those days. But uh, And, of course, spring, spring break and spring holiday, those are a couple of other ones. And so those are listed in the schedule. So I, I would especially refer you to the schedule to see what are we covering this week or what are we covering this week you know, for this special uh, class period that we may have. So anyway, uh, with, it some, with, with this in mind, I'm going to try to teach you about the earth. Yeah, I've been doing this for a long time now, and I, I feel like I'm a kind of a 
Oh, kind of an expert, really, frankly, in uh, as in geology, and and I I kind of I love this stuff. I wouldn't be doing it unless I really loved it, and so I want to share some of that passion with you. So, it's a good course. Um, I think I'm a pretty good teacher, and so hopefully you enjoy these these um, talks as well, or also the videos. I'm going to try to do live, you know, well not live to you, but live on you know on camera videos uh, while we do this stuff. So what you want to do, number one, is the you can read the, the guidelines for what we do. We study the earth, right? So we study the things that the earth is made out of, the processes that operate on the earth's surface. If you're more interested in geologic time, there's another course you can take, and that's historical geology. I also will teach that in the, uh, in the fall. And so historical geology is a real passion for me. And so that's more about, you know, what happened during the time of dinosaurs? What happened during the time when we had glaciation? How did the earth begin? All of that sort of thing. And so we only brush over that sort of material in this course. We do talk about it just a titch. Um, so other things, um, make sure you get a textbook. You can get it a lot of different places. You know, we're always encouraged to have our students buy things out of the bookstore, but you know, you can buy it pretty cheap or you can rent it pretty cheap. You can get it digitally. You can get it, you know, it is nice to have an actual copy of the book because then, okay, this may sound a little bit um, odd, but you can take it with you when you're in the bathroom because the way textbooks are written these days is there are little short passages in there. And so read these things, you know, look at the figures. And if you don't understand any of those figures, you probably ought to ask me about them. What is this showing me here? You know, what does this mean? So I'm here to help you. And really, when it comes right down to it, taking a course in any sort of the sciences is really a course in the language of that science. And so that's what that textbook is designed to, to show you here. And the textbook, of course, is by Tarbuck, Lutgens, and Tassa. Uh, or, excuse me, Lut Lutgens, uh, Tarbuck, and Tassa. Tassa is a graphic artist. He really does some beautiful graphics. And so this book is very richly illustrated. That's another reason you want to get it and pay attention to it. Now, you can get the digital version if you need to. You can even rent this textbook if you need to. Uh, you do not, however, have to get the Mastering Geology. I'm not a big fan of these sort of, like, you know, add-ons that they try to get you to spend an extra 30, 50 bucks, whatever. I, th I think it's maybe 25 even for that, you know. So it's not all that much, but at the same time, I just assume you have the textbook to, to look out of. And a lot of people get a misconception that the textbook is the course. The textbook is about the same material that I will cover in lectures. But, you know, really what you're learning, you're getting a peek inside of my brain to tell you what I understand about the earth. And the textbook is a little bit tougher to understand in many ways. I mean, they may write it pretty well. Some things, some, most of it's written pretty well. And, uh, but anyway, you're really getting this course from me. And so I'm here to teach you this. And that's, that's why I kind of like the videos, frankly, because I can talk to you one-on-one -on -one with these things. The other thing that you need for this course, as far as a textbook is going to be, okay, so get the textbook, which is Lutgens, Tarbuck, and Tassa. It's a 2018 version. So it's, I think the 11th edition, uh, of that tech, no, 13th edition now, so I've been teaching this for a lot of years. <laughs> um, you don't need the Mastering Geology, but get the lab manual. You have to have the lab manual. Now, try to get it as soon as you can because the lab manual is what you're going to be working out of. It's actually a workbook. And so use that. They call it a course pack for some reason, which is a stupid name. But anyway, get that. And it's, it's fairly inexpensive. I think maybe 10 bucks, something like that. Okay. That's the, the basics of the course right there. Just get the textbook, get the lab manual, show up for lab man, uh, show up for lab times, and your lab instructor is going to instruct you as how that's going to proceed. I'm that's uh, you know in I don't have any information on that, so I really don't know what's going on in the lab because I don't oversee the teaching assistants or anything like that. But they know who I am, and so they can come talk to me if they need me. Um, okay, so the policies in the course. This is a public affairs university. If you haven't learned that already, you're going to learn it in here. 
We believe that you should learn by the time that you graduate anyway about ethical leadership, cultural competence, and community engagement. I'm big on all of this stuff. In fact, I've twice been the Provost Fellow for Public Affairs. I love that theme that we have. That's our mission at, at Missouri State University. And it can cover any possible you know, field that you can imagine. So even in the sciences, we do the same sort of stuff. You know, not every not every professor is on board with this as far as, I mean, they may not know so much. So what we try to do in here is we try to help you develop some of those skills that are going to help you to critically evaluate people's arguments. And so critical thinking is a big, big deal for us in the sciences. So yeah, how do you apply that to, to public affairs? Well, cultural competence is you can... You can use rational thought, logical thinking to, to aid in your uh, understanding. And so, you know, leadership, that's another way uh, to, uh, to apply that sort of like mission statement that we have. So uh, you've probably already taken one of the GEP. Well, this is a GEP class. That means it's a general education requirement. And so this course was set aside for university students to take this in order to understand some sciences. A lot of people take geology because they don't want to dissect animals or they don't want to do chemical experiments in chemistry or they don't want to like do physics, you know. So it's a cleaner sort of like, you know, even though we play with rocks and things like that, uh, it's it's a little bit different. It's a different style of science, if you will. It's more of a whodunit sort of science, which is kind of what I really like about it. It's for puzzle solvers. It's for people who want to get engaged and have hands-on sort of things, but at the same time, they don't want to do rote memorization of what a chemical formula is, except you're going to be doing some of that. And you'll be doing some of, uh, you know, some formulas as well for, for other aspects of this, but they're pretty simple ones. So we like geology. In fact, <laughs> you'll find most of the geology uh, teaching assistants will be very helpful, and they all have a passion for this science. So you're lucky that way. So, um, okay, so for emergency response, we don't have to worry too much about uh, some of that sort of information. If you are in Temple Hall, just know that there is uh, there are rooms that are designated for uh, tornado shelters and things like that. We're in the spring semester, so you can probably expect some wild weather to, to add on to the pandemic. So... <laughs> Um, we also appreciate diversity. We know that people learn in a diverse environment much better, and it makes us better people. And so uh, diversity is a good thing in all aspects of diversity, in fact. So um, if you have any issues whatsoever, come see me, okay? So make sure that you let me know if you're having a problem with anything. Non-discrimination is another thing. Again, it's it lines up with diversity, so... Uh, make sure you come to me first, and then we'll we'll try to figure this uh, in, you know issue out. Uh, disability accommodation. If you, um, you know, they, they say that there are like nine different intelligence, um, nine different ways that people learn, and some people are really good. For instance, with music, I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, uh, the other things are like math. I'm okay with that. You know, I can learn math okay, but a lot of people are, you know, they're not so happy doing math, you know? So it's like, well, that's just your, maybe your style of learning and maybe you just need to practice it more. But then again, you don't want to practice it if you're not in any good at it whatsoever, because that can be kind of discouraging. What I'm trying to say, I guess, overall is that we have a group of people here on campus that are here to help you learn. And we want to help you succeed. And so one of those is through the Bear Claw. We have free tutoring and that sort of thing. I don't know exactly how that's going right now. They may be in Zoom sessions, but I think it's free to you. Uh, the other thing is we have a, we used to call it the Learning Diagnostic Center, but it's the Disability Resource Center now. And a lot of people may have attention deficit disorder. I probably do myself, you know, but, uh, you know, that's, it's never been diagnosed. Let me put it that way. But if you have any of those sorts of issues, you need to send me a piece of paper. There's a piece of paper that you can get from the Disability Resource Center that's going to help me to accommodate you and make sure that you're able to learn effectively. We have a policy on religious accommodation. You know, there are certain feast days or feast uh, times for different uh, religious faiths. And so we like to respect that. And we don't want to have, uh, you know, like exams on holidays or 
or, you know, do other special events that, you know, otherwise might conflict with something that you have. Now, what it doesn't mean is it's like I will be teaching evolution in this class somewhat. And so, yeah, you don't get to, you don't get to like challenge that or anything like that. It's like, well, I believe that the earth is only 6,000 years old. It's like, well, you may believe that, but in fact, I'm here to help teach you that in fact, the earth is 4.56 billion years old and that people have been on it for a long time. This is a very precarious place that we live in. And so it pays that you should probably pay attention to the sciences for that sort of aspect of your uh, your systems that you 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 compile um, for mental health and stress. Everybody's affected by stress right now. I got to tell you, even us professors. So there is a suicide hotline and there is counseling available to you on campus. And so in the course policies, which are posted under the course information tab on the left-hand side in Blackboard. You'll be able to access, access this uh, document, and then you can have information to where all of these sort of links are, are held. Uh, for attendance and quizzes, you know, um, you know, this is essentially an online class for the lecture. So except when I'm in to talk with individuals and email me first, and so I will be available, make myself self available during class time if somebody needs me. Otherwise, I'm going to try to stay away from Temple Hall as much as I can to, to keep my health, you know, and to keep the health of my family safe and secure. Uh, so we're not going to worry too much about attendance, but, you know, we are going to have some quizzes. So what I've done is on the schedule of classes, which is also in the course information, there's a list of 11 different quizzes that I expect to have. Now that, of course, um, if you, you know, if you are still here and I'm still here and not sick and things like that, you'll be expected to take that quiz sometime after the class on that day that it's listed. And they're always on Fridays. So I think they're almost, I think there's one on a Wednesday uh, during the spring holiday week. So there's one then, but uh, the rest of them are on Fridays. So one Wednesday and the rest Fridays. So there's 11 of them all together and they're worth 10 points each. So it's a way to kind of like have a low cost practice exam before the exam. So many of the questions that are going to be on the quizzes are also going to show up maybe on the exam. So it gives you also a study guide. So uh, good to pay attention to those. And so copy off the questions and so forth when you're doing it. And you'll be able to uh, to score better on the exams then. Um, and because we're not meeting in class, of course, I don't worry about cell phone use or laptops and things like that. There's no way I'm going to police that. And I'm not going to do any of those sort of look up things. There's a chosen name policy. If you have a different name uh, that you would prefer to be known by, uh, by me, you can email me that information. I have a special folder I set aside in my emails just for this class. Um we have a uh, Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. Uh, the FERPA is in effect in this class. We're a federally funded uh, university, so we have to abide by all the university rules which address, um, you know, sort of federal acts, uh, governmental acts, and so forth. Title IX, if you have any issues with that, you need to come see me as well, and we can take it to whoever we need to to make sure that your issues are addressed. So uh, otherwise, uh, drop in the class. That's usually somewhere around the middle of the semester. So if you feel like you're just not capable of keeping up, we need to talk, you know. And so email me first, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about whether you should drop it or not. And we'll look at your performance in the class. Um, you have to sign up for Black Warrior. Otherwise, you're not going to get the stuff here. So I'll have that available later this evening. And so um, it is a Blackboard course. Uh, the lecture exams are also listed in this document. And uh, the first one's going to be February the 12th. So it's about a month off. The next one's another month off. So that's going to be March the 12th. And so we have one in April. Of course, the final exam is going to be May 12th. So the 12th for three of the exams and the 16th in April. Um, so um, if, God forbid, if somebody gets sick with anything, you know, if you get the flu or if you get COVID-19, um, you got to let me know. I've already had at least one student who has already contacted me who has to be in quarantine. So it's important that, A, this student, who I hope will be listening to this 
uh, broadcast message here on YouTube. This is going to be on YouTube as well. Um, we will, uh, you know, this will be available to you so you can listen to me babble on here about this. I mentioned the quizzes, the grading, of course. Uh, this is an A, you know, plus minus sort of course. So I list the parameters out there for what it takes to get an A out of here, an A minus and so forth. And then lastly, uh, on the very last page of the course policy statements, it's a general education course. So we try to tell you what we want you to learn out of this course. And so it lists all of those sort of things, um, you know, about how you can effectively, you know, for instance, the ability to deal with ambiguity and evaluate choices, uh, willingness to make choices and evaluate them. So, you know, that's all, we call a boilerplate in the business, you know, it's part of the contract that is this course. Uh, but I'm here to help you. And so I'm your, you can think of me as a coach if you want. Uh, I'm also a pretty good, I think, with giving you what I think is really interesting and really kind of sensational about geology. Now, understanding the Earth's history, understanding the processes that work, that affects every one of us. Because everything that we have comes from Earth. We are on this planet. This is our planet to deal with when we have major things that can affect us through Earth processes, landslides, earthquakes, even tornadoes to a certain extent, right? You know, so there's there's all these sort of things that affect us on the surface of the Earth. And we're here to tell you about the things that the Earth is made out of and the processes that operate on Earth as best we understand it. And in fact, there's even a part of geology that expands into the planets. And so we have a branch called planetary geology. So we like to go out and map things if we can. So there's geologists that have been involved with mapping the terrestrial planets, for instance. And so there's quite a, a few things. So that's the other thing we want to tell you about, I guess, is like, if we love geology, we want you to love geology too. And if you really, really love geology, why don't you become a geologist and figure out there's something you can do for sure. Um, I'm going to leave it with that. So we'll have, uh, you know, this is going to be available on uh, on YouTube and I'll have the link on Blackboard. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.